So, um, I've been making videos for a year now, and it's kind of crazy to think about. A full year, I, I, my Spiral 1 video came out in uh, April 15th, 2018, and the time I'm uploading this video is going to be April 15th, 2019, and wow, time goes by quickly. So this video is going to be about like the events leading up to this moment, like why I became a YouTuber, what motivated me to be a YouTuber, uh, how did I get the equipment, uh, my experience so far. So if you don't if you don't like my channel enough to learn this stuff, I get it. I'm like that for for so few channels. Click off now. I don't care. I'm mostly just doing this in case someone out there does care and uh, for the sake of getting it out there. So I've been wanting to do YouTube for a long, long time. I think since I was 11. Thank God I did not start that soon. That would have been horrible. Uh, but the person that um, the person that inspired me to be a YouTuber was Chugger Connery. If you somehow don't know of him, I, I don't know how. He's a pretty big YouTuber at this point, over a million subscribers. Um, he does Let's Plays of a bunch of Nintendo games, and I absolutely loved him when I was younger. I still like him a lot, mostly as a person. I'm not that into Let's Plays anymore. They're fun to do, but I only watch them when I'm in a specific mood now. And uh, but I didn't become that way for a few years. For that time, I wanted to be a Let's Player. It was my ultimate ultimate goal. And uh, my my goal eventually changed when I started to watch the YouTube channel, Some Call Me Johnny, an absolutely amazing YouTuber. He's my favorite one, by the way. He's the guy that inspired me to do this, so if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't. Now, I watched game reviews before, um, like uh, Peanut Butter Gamer, Angry Video Game Nerd, uh, JonTron, whatever. I watched all of them, but like, the thing with them is, they're all heavily focused around comedy, and obviously that's not a bad thing, um, but the thing is, I'm not that funny. I can make the occasional joke, but I'm not funny enough to make that, you know, the reason why someone would watch a video, so the idea of making a, the idea of making a, uh, review series just was not within the realm of possibility to me, until I found Some Call Me Johnny. I am not at all saying he's not funny, he definitely is, but that's not the point in his videos. It, so his reviews are more so on the analytical side than the comedy side. And I didn't realize you could make a review like that while making it entertaining, and Johnny showed me that you can. And I wanted to become a reviewer after that. I didn't, I didn't have the highest doubt, um, I had some doubts, like, I didn't think I was a good writer, honestly I still don't think I'm a good writer, but. I had some teachers in high school tell me that it was, but like, that's high school, the standards are pretty low for that, and, uh, but I, I still wanted to do it, and I would have done it way sooner than I did if it wasn't for the fact I had no money and no equipment. In fact, uh, until I started YouTube, I didn't even have a computer, like, not even a computer in this house, nothing, no computer at all, I mean, we had one that was broken. So I was kind of a long way. I didn't think I would actually get uh, one until I got a job, and honestly, I still don't have a job, but that's for personal reasons. I'm looking to change that, but whatever. It's besides the point. But my, uh, but my mom um, asked her boyfriend if he could use a uh, good chunk of his tax return to help me get the proper equipment, along with my dad getting some of the equipment too, like the camera. And I. Like one day, I didn't think I still thought being a reviewer was way out of the question. Then suddenly, holy crap! I'm already on Amazon looking for the necessary equipment. I spent like six hours, by the way, looking for everything. Like, geez, actually more than six hours. I, f I think I spent like a whole day on that. Anyway, uh, and for a long time, I've always told myself whenever I do start game reviews, it would be Spyro because Spyro Three is the first game I've ever played. I love those games dearly. So, yeah, it'd be really fitting if I did Spyro. And, uh, coincidentally, rumors of Reignited Trilogy were absolutely everywhere at the time, so... Yeah, that worked out. <laughs> yeah, my Spyro Marathon did not happen because of Reignited Trilogy. I actually started that before it was even announced. There's a ton of rumors, and I fully believed them, but nothing was confirmed at the time. So that's how I became a YouTuber, but as for the events that actually happened while making these videos, uh, I got some stories. Spyro 1, holy crap that sucks. Uh, no, the game is great, but the actually making the video sucked. Not because I was new, I actually got the hang of the editor I was using pretty quickly, Shotgun. Um, it was because 
I got a really, really nasty virus on my computer to a point where it was slowly, slowly destroying it to a point where it's just so many things that I became completely unusable. I have no idea how I got there. I didn't download anything fishy, I just got it. And I, even to this day, no idea. Anyway, at first I thought it was just Shotcut being Shotcut because Shotcut sucks. It's a free editor and I hate it. Um, I'm sure it's fine for Let's Plays, but for a review, no, 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 it's far from fine. Anyway, I thought it was a shotgun being stupid, so I was, um, so I was trying to fix it, but then I realized, holy crap, my entire computer is slow now. It was only noticeable shotgun at first because I was the only taxing thing I had in my computer at the time, I didn't have any games or anything like that, but, yeah, and then I, I, I backed up everything I needed on an SD card and just unloaded it on the computer downstairs because I didn't have, I didn't have enough room on that SD card for everything. And I spent like a whole day trying to fix it, and I finally did. Anyway, I had to export what I already have. Which, fun fact, that's why my very first video has a default font. It's not that I was too lazy to find a better font, it's because I wasn't going to change it until later in the editing process. But by the time, like even before that happened, I had to export what I already have, so everything I put there was set in stone. So I couldn't change the font. That was, that was fun. And anyway, uh, Spyro 2 is still at a major problem, um, so when I was mostly done with the video, the file would just not load. Like, Shaco would crash whenever I load up the... Shut up, Navi. I have no idea if I picked up on the mic. But the file just would crash Shaco whenever I tried loading it. I had no idea why. I spent like three days absolutely horrified. Am I going to have to redo like 30 hours of work? Uh, and by the way, yeah, editing, especially on Shotcut, took forever. And, uh, no, no, uh, what was happening there is my project became too big for my computer, so I had to turn on GPU processing, and you might be wondering, why wouldn't you, just, why wouldn't you have that on anyway? It's because it makes Shotcut so much more unstable, it crashes all the time, and you can't even have text for some reason. You have to have, you have to either, um, not have text at all, or have 3D text, but that's... That's tacky, I don't want that. So I, I learned that I should probably export my projects like halfway through before continuing, and then just build off from there in, a, in, a, in the editor. And that, that was fun. Even Spyro 3, by the time I had Shotcut figured out, um, it still wasn't problem free. If you watch the video now, you'll notice some of the audio near the end is desynced. That's not my fault. Shotcut just would not, would not sync it. I couldn't use fade-ins, it just wouldn't work. Um, the audio desync. Yeah, I, I couldn't do anything about it. I explored it like three times, and yeah, that sucked. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause this because I somehow forgot to bring up the biggest problem with Shotcut. You can't pre-trim. If you don't know what that is, it's when you take a few seconds away from a much larger clip. So what I had to do in Shotcut was put in like a two hour long clip and cut out the three seconds I need and then delete everything else. Not only would that cause Shotcut to crash a lot, but that takes so much longer, I hated it. Enter the Dragonfly was the first video that was relatively problem free. But that was also the last video I made because I finally moved on to a paid editor, Movie Studio Platinum 14. If you don't know what that is, Movie Studio is basically Diet Vegas, and I actually love it. It's a great editor. It does everything I need it to do. Works fine. The UI is good. Yeah, I love it. And I've been using it ever since. The Hero's Tale is the first video I made with that. Um, and I've been slowly doing more and more things since. Every I made a gold mine to learn at least one new editing technique um, in each video, and some of them aren't noticeable, like uh, Battle Bikini Bottom. There isn't anything noticeable there, but... I think my friends are trying to call me a Discord. Now it's not... New editing, the, the new editing technique in Battle Bikini Bottom wasn't super noticeable, but I, I basically just learned how to... how to un... how to unstretch footage. Some of the Spongebob clips I used in that video were stretched. I don't like that, so I had to learn how to put them back in 4x3. So that was interesting. There wasn't actually any good tutorial on that. That was annoying. I had to figure that out on my own. Anyway, as for the actual videos themselves, honestly, I don't like my first few videos. Uh, at the time, I did, but looking back, they're kind of rough. And like, yeah, that's expected. I'm not gonna give myself crap, but yeah, that was anyway. 
Enter the Dragonfly was the first video I made that I was actually... I still consider good. I still like that video. I mean, there's some issues I have with it, but it's still good. But here's the thing. I noticed a major, major problem with it, like, a month after I finished it. So I thought it'd be cool to have some Enter the Dragonfly development history into the video, because, like, it's Enter the Dragonfly. Of course the development history would be interesting. But... I ended up spreading misinformation and accident. There's some troll who made up this story about working at Equinox, and, no, Check 6, I'm sorry, and uh, saying that Enter the Dragonfly's poor sales caused Spiral 5 to be cancelled, at least a different Spiral 5 um, than a hero scale was. And I thought that was interesting, I believed it because I didn't see any articles that said otherwise, only saw articles saying it was true. But if I just dug a little bit deeper in that forum, I would have seen a load of people say, yeah, this is BS. And I really regret not doing that because that's such an obvious mistake. It's so stupid of me not to, to not do that, but I did, and I, that mistake really got to me, so I ended up taking that video down and cutting out those parts of the video, along with fixing some minor editing errors and improving a little bit because I had a uh, movie studio at that time. So, yeah, um, if you're wondering why my Enjoy Dragonfly video is newer than my Hero Sale video, that's why. Another thing I forgot to mention while filming, not long after I uploaded that video, more info about Enter the Dragonfly's development came out thanks to the user Mr. F01. He basically just contacted a bunch of developers behind the game and made a documentary out of it. Check it out, it has a lot of things that you probably wouldn't expect. Like surprisingly vicious insults and even death threats straight from the developers at Check 6. There was even attempted murder at some point, seriously check out these videos, they're really good. The link will be in the description. And ever since then I actually like a lot of the videos I made, uh, and I'm currently working on Paper Mario, I think I should be up in a couple days, so I'm sorry I've been taking forever. And it, I'm super proud of it, my Paper Mario video I think has the best editing I've done so far easily, and I'm hoping you people will like it. It's weird to call your audience you people. I'm sorry, that sounds kind of mean. <laughs> I don't know why I worded it like that, that's weird. And yeah, I I think I've gotten a, a lot better since the beginning. I enjoy making reviews quite a bit. Uh, there's some parts I don't like, like writing really gets uh, tiring, it drains me quickly. Voiceover is a chore, but everything else I like. Uh, well, filming kind of sucks because I have to wait until, like, okay, I rely on the sun. Uh, this video, I delayed like three days just because it was cloudy for like four days straight, and that's fun. Uh, it should still be up on time, but, you know, I didn't want to get it done last minute. And I guess the last thing I should talk about in this video is my, uh, sub growth. So I've been, like, obviously this video is about me, my channel being a year old now, and, uh, I haven't grown much. Like, I have 90 subscribers, which may sound respectable, but... I already had like 25 of those in the beginning because I, I, for years I made like random gameplay cli clips like hey look at this funny glitch that happened to me by using PlayStation 4's built-in capture feature or Smash 4's or uh, Mario Kart 8's uh, capture features too and uh, I, I, some of those videos somehow gain attention like I have a Sonic Mania video that's now unlisted that has like 14,000 views and how did that happen? <laughs> It's just me pointing out a glitch that happened to me. Um, but yeah, uh, so really I've only gained 65 subscribers since I started this channel, and... Well, I'd be lying if I said that didn't kill my motivation, at least a little. I... I try to look at things in a positive way, and this is so this is how I see it. That's still 65 people who like my stuff enough to hit that subscribe button, so... I can't get too upset. I mean, like, clearly I'm doing something right, right? Um, and I am willing to bet the reason why my videos don't do as well as I'd like after a year in is because I upload so infrequently. I think <laughs> a year in, I don't even have 11 reviews up. I'm very close to getting this video finished, but I don't think it's going to be up by the time this video is. So, yeah, I think that's probably why. And I should probably upload more frequently, but it's kind of hard to do that because... I only like working sometimes, and I don't want to force myself since it's just a hobby. Um, and uh, either way, I'm still happy if there's anyone out there who actually enjoys my videos, and I have gotten a few people, you know, 
comments in more than one of my videos, which is a big thing because that shows like, hey, they legitimately like myself. Like, because they watch more than one of my videos. And I, I very much appreciate any comments. I appreciate anyone even like attempting to give one of my videos a go. Even if you only watch like maybe two minutes of it, I appreciate you at least giving me a shot. Starting a YouTube channel is pretty hard now. And so I, I appreciate any kind of support I get. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, Paper Mario should be up soon. After that, I will hopefully have uh, something pretty interesting after that video. Um, I'm just going to say now as a reward for watching this much, I plan on covering the Wii U. So it's not a game review, but I'm just going to be talking about my personal history with the Wii U. Gets a lot of hate, but I had a lot of fun with it at the time. I had some experiences I want to share, so... Yeah, I'll make that a video. Don't know what I'm gonna do after that. Maybe a crash marathon. I don't know. Anyway, uh, my voice is, is hurting because I... This is my second take at this, and I need a drink. Uh... <laughs> water downstairs, so I'm gonna go get that, and uh... I guess, bye! See you in Paper Mario.